Imagine an aircraft that can cross continents in the time it takes most fighters to climb to altitude, a machine designed not just to outrun threats but to render them irrelevant by sheer speed, altitude, and surprise. That's the promise behind the SR-72, often nicknamed, Son of Blackbird, or, Dark Star, a hypersonic successor to the legendary State Route 71 Blackbird that aims to combine extreme speed, advanced stealth, and next-generation sensors to perform intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance ISR, and perhaps even strike, missions in contested airspace. The idea is simple in concept and brutally difficult in practice. Fly fast enough and high enough that modern air defenses can't reliably detect, track, or intercept you, and move so quickly that the time between sensing and acting is compressed to minutes or seconds rather than hours. This kind of capability would reshape how military planners think about reconnaissance timeliness, strike options, and crisis decision cycles. To understand what the State Route 72 aims to do, you have to start with the Blackbird legacy. The State Route 71 was built to collect intelligence over denied areas by simply going too fast and too high for interceptors and surface-to-air missiles of its era. The State Route 72 concept picks up that operational logic but multiplies its technical ambition by pushing into the hypersonic regime, typically defined as speeds above Mach 5. At hypersonic speeds you encounter radical changes in aerodynamics, propulsion, thermal management, and materials engineering. Aerodynamic heating alone transforms an aircraft into a flying furnace. Friction with the air produces temperatures that can soften or melt ordinary airframe metals and damage electronics and sensors. To survive and operate at Mach 6, designers must rethink everything from structural materials to sensor cooling, from engine cycle transitions to communications links. What looks like a simple extension of the SR-71's mission, faster reconnaissance, is in fact a near-total reinvention of high-speed flight. The heart of the State Route 72 challenge is propulsion. Conventional turbine engines power aircraft up to high supersonic speeds but can't run efficiently at Mach 5 to 6. Scramjets, supersonic combustion ramjets, can operate well at hypersonic speeds, but they don't work at takeoff or low speeds. The State Route 72 concept therefore centers on a turbine-based combined cycle TBCC, propulsion system. One power plant are set of tightly integrated systems capable of running as a turbine engine at low speeds for taxi, takeoff, and acceleration, then handing off to a ramjet, scramjet mode for sustained hypersonic crews. That handoff, both mechanical and thermodynamic, is one of the toughest engineering puzzles. It requires shared inlets and nozzles, complex internal bypasses, and systems that can survive intense thermal and pressure loads. Lockheed Martin Skunk Works and partners have studied such configurations, and NASA and other agencies have funded feasibility studies to see whether a TBCC concept can be made practical. It's not just about raw power, it's about controlled transition, stable combustion at high Mach numbers, and predictable behavior across a wildly changing flight envelope. Materials and thermal protection follow directly from propulsion. At Mach 6, leading edges, inlets, and aft fuselage surfaces face temperatures measured in the hundreds or thousands of degrees Fahrenheit, depending on altitude and flight profile. Designers can't rely on standard aluminum or mild steel, they must use advanced composites, ceramics, and high-temperature alloys, some borrowed from missile and space systems. Carbon-carbon composites, ceramic matrix composites, titanium alloys treated for creep resistance, and novel thermal coatings become standard tools. Even then, thermal expansion and differential heating create stresses across joints and sensor apertures, so the airframe must be engineered to tolerate constant and rapid temperature changes. Passive thermal protection may be supplemented by active cooling systems for critical avionics and sensors, and designers must balance weight and durability carefully. Every pound of protection is a pound that reduces range or payload. Stealth and signature management are also central. The State Route 71 relied on a combination of altitude, speed, and reduced radar cross-section to survive. For the SR-72, stealth must be integrated with hypersonic considerations, Inlet and nozzle design, surface curvature, and materials all influence radar visibility and thermal signatures. At hypersonic speeds the aircraft produces intense plasma and infrared signatures, making the classic low observable tricks less effective on their own. Designers therefore consider multi-spectrum signature reduction, 
shaping and materials to mitigate radar returns, thermal management to reduce and mask infrared emissions, and mission concepts that exploit speed and timing to minimize exposure during the most dangerous flight phases. Communications and data links must also be hardened and secure. At Mach 6 you collect an enormous amount of data quickly, and transmitting that intelligence back to decision makers requires high bandwidth, low latency links that preserve security and resist jamming or interception. Sensors on and state Route 72 would be expected to be a generational leap beyond legacy ISR systems. Hypersonic overflight compresses the dwell time over any particular target. You might be overhead for seconds rather than minutes. So sensors must be fast, precise, and capable of collecting useful intelligence in very short windows. That means high-resolution electro-optical infrared EO IR arrays with rapid slew rates, synthetic aperture radar SAR systems that can image quickly at angle and range, and perhaps novel signal intelligence SIGINT suites designed for brief, high-altitude intercepts. Because data collected at hypersonic speeds is time-sensitive, Onboard processing and edge analytics may be as important as raw collection. Pre-process onboard to prioritize and compress the most critical data for immediate downlink, and use onboard AI to detect change, classify targets, and trigger automated alerts for human operators downstream. In short, the